And we're back here on Liquid Lunch, and uh, we are welcoming uh, Stephanie Titus Andrews here. And Stephanie, great to have you on the show. Nice to Welcome, be here. Stephanie. Nice to be here. Now, you have uh, I guess you've had quite a journey, I right? I sure have. Yes, I and, have. Uh, and you're here to... Uh, well, your company's called Created to Excel, right? That's right. That's so correct. So may, maybe we can start with that. What's the, the real purpose of, of the company? The purpose of the company is to empower women giving them an injection of hope, direction, and strength. That's my mandate. So I hope to do that through speaking, writing, and, and um, offering coaching, which is something I also do. Okay, now is this for all women, or is this targeted at women who are in a particular circumstance? Absolutely. It's for women going through divorce, especially if there was an abusive history with the relationship. Right. Okay. And it's just for women. I prefer to work with women. Okay. I do know that there are men that are going through the same issue, mm -hmm. but I prefer to work with women. I've I've coached men in the past, but I I really do prefer to work with women. Yes. So it's it's a coaching methodology. It's a you coaching use, method. Right? That's correct. Um, and what's the best point for women to come in and and, and start to work with you? Are, when they're still in the relationship or? Absolutely not. I will not work with a woman who's still in an abusive relationship because it's too, dif it's too difficult and it's yeah. dangerous. Yeah. What I prefer is a woman who has left the relationship mm -hmm. and especially if there was abuse in it and she is in a good space emotionally. So if she still needs counseling, she needs to get some counseling first and then I can work with her. I'm almost thinking that, uh, you know, for, for someone who's in that situation, that's when they need the most help to, you know, being stuck in that situation and you don't even know how you're going to get out. Uh, I mean, is that why you're writing the book? <laughs> the book is, is a narrative of a person who is in a relationship that's abusive and her journey out of an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And then behind the at the back of the book, there are going to be resources for women in Canada and the U.S. Yeah. to help them get to the stage of leaving, if mm -hmm. that's something that they need help with. Because that's, pro isn't that, pro I mean, uh, you know, I don't know exactly what your story is exactly, but isn't that the really the most difficult is to, because you're in that relationship, you know there's something wrong, you know that but you don't know what to do about it. That's like leaving exactly is not right. just that easy, right? It's not easy. And a lot of times it takes, um, when I, I actually left and went to a shelter and when I got to the shelter, they say it takes between nine and 12 times to leave. So uh, women do know there's something wrong. They do attempt to leave, but usually go back because of finances. And that's usually the biggest mm -hmm. hurdle. So with the book, and I also blog as well, I'm, I'm trying to let women know that there are resources out there for them to, to go and obtain when they leave, mm -hmm. if they chose to leave. Because th the alternative is not really that great. Mm. Okay. So we have a, now the book's not out yet, but we do have a, a picture of what the cover is going to be, uh, which is right there. Water for the journey, 156 days to freedom. Yes. Can you just tell us, I mean, that's a uh, curious title. What's the uh, inspiration for that? The inspiration, initially I was going to call it Water for the Journey, only because I have a lot of references to water. The book is, is split up into categories, each chapter. There's a, a section called Cup of Water. And... I was initially just going to call it that, but then when I checked back how long it took me to leave, it was exactly 156 days. So I wrote a story based on my actual experience of amount, the amount of time that it took me to leave. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that planning your leave is, is really essential. Mm -hmm. If you don't plan and you leave really on an emotional high I'm not necessarily saying it was a good emotional high just on emotional high usually you come back mm. so if you strategically plan mm -hmm. 
then you have more chance of success. That's how that name came around. Okay. Now, is the book already written? It's or? written. Yeah. It is written. I am in the process of re-editing it and sending it to my editor. I have a, a very short timeline that I'm working with, and I'm hoping that it will be out in May. So just a couple more months. A couple more months. Um, and what form will the book take? Is it going to be a, an e-book or a regular book or both? Or It's going to be both. Okay. I will have a downloadable version, but because I have color pictures in the book, it, there will also be a hard copy. Okay. Speaking of color pictures, I noticed that you have a, a map to freedom. Is that right? Yeah, my, my, or my, not my, 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 my new, my life, new map. life map. Right. And how does that correlate to the 156 days to freedom? Can you sort of visually take us through it? My new life map is my coaching program that yeah. I developed. Mm -hmm. I it's used a great title, my new life map. Yeah, I thought that was, I just thought my life map. But then it's yeah. like, no, you're actually starting a new life when you're yeah. leaving an abusive relationship. Everything's starting all over again. So... It, it kind of ties in with the fact that both of them are supposed to give you some sort of freedom. Yes. So the book is 156 Days to Freedom, My New Life Map. You should, by the end of it, have mental freedom and emotional freedom. Mm -hmm. So the both of them, I would say, are leading towards some sort of freedom. Event, yeah. Yeah, that's correct. That's actually an exciting concept. I mean, not just for people that might be kind of in a bad relationship situation, but sometimes just a bad situation in general and you want to create a new life. Is this something that, you know, not just women can use, but maybe even not just women who are in bad Ex relationships? Absolutely, absolutely. Because I do have one section that I will attach the abuse factor into. And if there was no abuse, then I can leave that out. Mm -hmm. So I have 10 steps that I take people through from stop, drop, and roll. That's the, the, the point where they're, they've left and it's like everything's on fire. So mm -hmm. like the firemen say, you know, stop, let's analyze, and then we can progress. We look into the finances. We look at the legal, the children, taking care of yourself, putting stuff into your mind mm -hmm. that's, that's helpful and uh, taking care of yourself and emerging joyfully is the last part. Wow. I'm just wondering, since you've been through this whole process, is there like um, maybe a fundamental um, misstep that people, are, women are taking that gets them into these bad relationships in the mm. first place? My, mine is even a little more deep because I actually went at it from a religious point of view. And um, as I was researching, because I came from a religious background, as I was researching, I realized that it, it is even more prevalent in the religious community. You mean abusive relationships? Absolutely, absolutely. And the misstep is that um, we, we don't, nurture ourselves enough and we don't listen to our intuition so there's in, in the first chapter I said something like um, th there were signs as big as billboards mm -hmm. and we ignore them mm. like the you know the, the the gut feeling the hair on the back of your neck standing on end all those things that you know when you're following your intuition you go oh my gosh run away and we, we say, oh, it'll be okay, we can change him, and you know, things will be fine. And that, that's a fundamental thing I find a lot of women say. Like if you talk, there will be that common thread. I kind of felt, but, and that's something that I, I think that we do. No, that's, a, I mean, that's a, maybe a life's worth of learning to you know, listen to your gut sense Absolutely. of things right Absolutely. because and uh, in particular you know not just well religion is a big one right you you because you buy into a religion religion tells you kind of what you should be thinking right. or that's how right. you should be living and and you override your gut sense 
and it's not just religion, but it's other things, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. School, family, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, what did you emerge from? What kind of wisdom or understanding did you emerge from after going through all this? I realized that because I was in the church, that does not mean that God is, 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 is bad. It means that someone just overstepped their, their boundaries. They went a little farther than they should have, than any human being should have with, mm-hmm. with their verbal onslaughts or the way they treated a person. And I emerged victoriously. I emerged happier than I thought I could have ever been at this point in my life. So it, it, it could have made me a very bitter person, but it, instead it made me a person who wants to help other people not get to that bitter place. Now what about somebody that's in a difficult situation right now that but they are, you know, maybe in a religious background mm-hmm. and they buy it, you know, they buy into everything you're supposed to buy into that, you know, you sh- you only get married once, that it's a sin to divorce or whatever, right? So they're dealing with that too. They're dealing with all this ideology, absolutely, absolutely. ideological mindset and they're finding it very difficult to even though they have their needs to get away or just to survive, right? Mm-hmm. But they have this this ideological framework that, that they're locked into as absolutely, well. Absolutely. You know, I mean, what would you tell someone like that? I was there too. I was there too. And the, the most important thing that I learned from this is that children learn what they live. And especially if you have kids, they will pick up on a lot of the behaviors that they're exposed to. They are mirrors. So if you don't want to see that behavior carry on, because if, a, if a, a child is exposed to abuse, they will either abuse or be abused. Mm-hmm. Bullying has to find a, an outlet. Mm-hmm. And if it's not dealt with, if you don't address the situation, it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue. It's going to constantly continue. What was your motivation from where you were to actually get through and make those changes? I kept getting, the stress kept making me sick. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this has got to stop. I, just before I left, I actually had an appendectomy. And it's a normal procedure that takes three days to, to heal. I was in the hospital for a week. And then I had complications and complications and complications. I ended up with a blood clot going towards my lung from an appendectomy, just because one thing after another, there was stress, stress, stress. So I had the appendectomy in December and I didn't get the all clear till almost May. And throughout that time I was planning, because when I was in the hospital, I was like, this is it. I'm not doing this anymore. Mm. And that was like the deciding factor because I was just getting sicker and sicker and sicker and I could just see myself. You did know. you do it by yourself or did you have help? I, I, I had <laughs> help. I did. I enlisted the help of, of uh, my children and my, my friends and family. And they were not surprised when I, when I told them. My family said I had the patience of Job. So they were expecting me to have called it quits a long time prior. And I just kept going because I didn't, you know, I had that thing in my mind. I didn't want to go have a divorce and all that stuff. And it was like, you know what? At the end of this, I might end up being the one that's, that's the loser mm-hmm. because my health would just take me out probably. How many children do you have? I do have three. Three? What ages approximately? My oldest is 24, and I have a 21-year-old and an 18-year-old. And when did all of this major transition occur? It occurred two and a half years ago. My goodness. And I am evidence of what I preach. The children learn what they live syndrome. My eldest daughter went into the same situation. So while I was leaving, I was working to help her get out of an abusive relationship. Mm. So I am... That's... While I was in the shelter, it was like, you know what? I'm not going to let another woman 
I, I will do whatever I can to yes. help women who have motivation. gone through gone through situations like this. How many times did you go back? This was my third time leaving. So I left twice before. And How when long I, did you leave each time? The first time I left, I was married for just over a year. Mm. And you left for how long? And I left for about a week. The second time... And how was it coming back? And why did you go back? Well, because I, I left on an emotional high, like I had said. I didn't take anything with me except for a little bit of clothing. My two children were still at home. Yes. And so I didn't have any finances or anything to sustain me. So I went back and, of course, You went course back there's because you left on the high and it wasn't yes, sustainable. Yes, that's right. And All I was right. staying with a friend. And how did it go when you got went back? There was always, I'm so sorry, you know, I, I, it wouldn't happen again. But if you didn't do this, then I wouldn't have done that. And there's always, mm-hmm. there's always a but when there's... Yeah, the, justification. That's exactly it, justification. The second time I left about nine years ago mm-hmm. and... My kids at the time were begging me not to go back because they were old enough at that point in time. And I didn't think I could financially sustain myself, even though I went to a shelter, even though the the, the women were giving me options. And the third time, Uh, How long were you away? I was away for almost a month. For a month, and you still went back. I went back. How was it going back the second time then? The second time, I went back with a determination that I wasn't going to cry anymore. So I was a little more, you know, I don't know how to to term it, but I I had a little more um, backbone, not enough to leave (laughs) and stay for a while, but I had enough that I wasn't going to let him make me cry anymore. And did you cry? I didn't cry until just before I was ready to leave when I was in the hospital. Oh, so the third time then was this uh, two and a half years ago. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. So until I had my appendectomy, I did not cry. Not even privately? Nope. No. Okay. I just, I said, I'm not going to have this make me cry anymore. And okay. then after that, a lot of floodgates <laughs> opened, <laughs> of course. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for people, uh, women listening out there right now, Mm -hmm. I mean, what state do they need to be in to benefit from coming to see you now? They need to have left already. I, I can counsel on what to do in order to get there, but I will not be in the middle as they are leaving, especially an abusive relationship. I don't want any repercussions because there could be some. Mm -hmm. They do need to have, I would say they, they should have some sort of counseling first. If, if they're fairly emotionally stable, then I will work with them as well. If they haven't had counseling, I'm just saying. As we're going through my process, I do have one specific step called Rocks to Pearls, where I do take them through all the different negative things that they've had shot at them and help them find some real good gems from those things. Mm -hmm. But I won't take a person who's left, you know, last week. They need to have some some things on their own in place. And I guess they need to be ready to start to build their new life map, right? That's right. They need to be ready to progress as opposed to carrying around the luggage, which a lot of people like to carry for what reason, I'm not really sure. Mm. So um, now if, for, for those women in that uh, circumstance, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? You can contact me on the web at www.created2excel.ca or they can contact me by phone. And if I don't answer, you can leave a message, please, at 647-928-4728. And I guess I can check out that website as well, created to excel.ca. That's correct. And the book, I mean, is, that, is the book going to help uh, women who are still in the relationship? 
I'm hoping it does. I'm hoping that they can use it and see, you know what, I don't have to take this nonsense anymore. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I did write it from a religious perspective, but anybody can read it and get nuggets of truth from it. And I hope they can see that, you know what, when he says this to me, that's not really a really nice thing to say and, you know, bolster themselves up so they can start, start a new life. Start to make life. that transition out. That's right. Okay, so the book hopefully out in May and that's I guess correct. people can uh, just go to your website and get in touch with you and uh, let you know that they want to get a copy when it's, uh, when it's out, right? Absolutely. I will be putting up a pre-order form and um, I'm hoping to do a really huge campaign towards the end of April because I will be having a lot of coupons and things like that that they can have and utilize at the back of the book. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, listen, thanks for coming in today and uh, sharing your story with us. And uh, we look forward to seeing the book in May. And uh, again, people can check it out, createdtoexcel.ca. Thanks, Stephanie. You're welcome. Stephanie, thank you. You're welcome. Good luck on your journey. Okay, then. Bye-bye. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Come back in a couple of minutes with our political correspondent, Brendan O'Farrell. As Luck Lunch hits the home stretch here on a Friday, we'll be right back.